Hello there, Ray here. We are here on the beta version of the Bedrock Edition. And as you can see behind me, we got these brand new blocks added into the game. These are called frog lights and they're in three different types. There is the pearlescent frog light, which has the color of like a pearl. There's also the verdant frog light, which has the color of like lush vegetation. And lastly is ochre, which is kind of a yellowish orange. And as the block name suggests, they do put off light. We went ahead and tested this, similar to what you get out of a normal torch. So like a light level 15. Blocks themselves don't put off any colored light, but they can be placed down to have different rotations. Notice that these lines that are on the actual block can be turned different directions. But you're probably wondering, how do you even get these blocks in 1.19 when it comes out? That's actually done by having a magma cube that is near one of these guys. What they end up doing is actually stick their tongues out grabbing the magma cube it has to be a tiny one and then once they grab it then they spit out the new type of blocks notice that these are the orange frogs they're from the humid biomes and when they slurp up a magma cube it turns into the orangish or the orker frog light and tadpoles grown up inside of a dry biome, such as a savanna, are going to have the white colored frogs and when the light colored frogs kill magma cubes they then drop the whitish color pearlescent frog light. And tadpoles that are grown up inside of cold biomes will produce these green frogs. And when these guys kill the tiny magma, they're going to drop the greenish color one, also known as the verdant frog light. My goal today is to make a farm where we can get all three of these new blocks automatically. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys some cool tricks that you can do with frogs. Now make sure you're subscribed and let's get into the farm designing. So first we need to get magma cubes and frogs into one area. We can either move the magma cubes into overworld where the frogs are at, or we can move the frogs from the overworld into the nether where the magma cubes are. Since we need a unlimited amount of magma cubes in order to keep this farm going, we're going to move the frogs into the nether where the magma cubes naturally spawn. So we're here in the nether and we plop down some frogs. We see that they do just fine here. They don't take any damage. They also come up as the dry type. I guess because the nether is kind of really dry, they come up as the light colored ones. There's two great ways to get magma cubes in large amounts. First is the magma cube spawner that can be found in this type of bastion. The other great location is here in the basalt deltas because magma cubes spawn abundantly in this biome. Luckily in the past I've already designed two different types of magma cream farms that use both these locations and I've even updated my mob spawner one to use the powder snow. Let's take a look at each of these farms and see if we can update them so they work as a frog light farm. So this one here is my simple magma spawner that just has them drop down and then we have a golem here that is attracted them towards them because the magma want to try to kill the golem but they can't actually get to it and instead they hop on top of these wither roses and they'll eventually die dropping the magma cream. This is being picked up by the hopper minecart and being dropped off inside of this chest here. The golem itself also kind of slaps these guys and ends up killing them much faster. So the first thing we're going to do is take out the wither roses because we don't want the magma cubes to actually die. We want them just to get to the smallest form. We'll also need to remove this iron golem or just move him back or something because currently he's hitting these guys and actually killing them, which we don't want. So I went ahead and moved the iron golem so there is two walls between him and the magma cubes. Now I would like to come in and just kill off the large ones as well as the small ones and leave the tiny ones alive. Now I'm going to use powder snow just like my other magma cube farm because it actually will do more damage to these guys because they're considered a warm up. So I got up here at this height here. You can see it is damaging the magma that are trying to get to this iron golem, the ones that are in the center. And they die off and they turn into the medium ones. Now you can see there's a problem that these medium sized ones aren't reaching the snow layers anymore. And that's because the entire floor is actually made out of slabs. So let's go ahead and change that out. So I change out the entire floor to stairs. These will prevent mobs from actually spawning inside of here. Alternatively, you could use glass. This is just cheaper in some cases. This also boosts the medium slimes up so they now should be able to take damage from the powder snow. Let's put some more of it in and see how it does. So even with this powder snow in front of this iron golem's face, they're still able to track him and try to get up close. Now the spawner itself isn't too fast, so we don't expect too many mobs to be coming through at any given time. And we can see that the big ones are jumping over top of it, so they're kind of like resetting their freezing time. So I'm going to create a little ledge right along here so that these big guys will get stuck underneath of it. But we're currently not using our powder snow efficiently as these guys that are called small are actually bigger than one block. So even if we would remove one powder snow here, it doesn't matter if he stands directly in the center of this, he will still get frozen by the nearby ones. Let's go ahead and take out every other one. We also had some large slimes try to stand on top of this ledge here. So we'll make it just a little bit taller so they can't quite get to it. 
Now it's looking much better. We get the guys coming towards the iron golem. The big ones are dying in the powder snow. They are getting kind of pushed back by the little guys, but in the actual design, we'll have frogs that are killing these guys off fairly fast. So there shouldn't be too many of the little guys piling up along the edge there. We'll probably have to put quite a few frogs into this farm here because doing some testing with these guys it seems after they eat several magma cubes they have a couple minute delay before they start eating anymore again if you're enjoying the video so far leave a like on it i'm just gonna come in with a second layer of powder snow that's gonna kind of occupy these corner spaces here so now they're all coming in near they're freezing off and turning into little guys so if we had frogs in java edition this setup here should work in my powder snow version of this farm, I have powder snow across the entire floor. Then they spawn in and they just fall directly into it. They don't really hop once they're inside of it, since you can't actually jump when you're inside of it. And it also does the extra damage because they are warm mobs. So they die very quickly. Then all loot is picked up by the hopper minecarts and dropped off in this chest over here. To get this farm working as a frog light farm, all I did was raise the powder snow up by one level. That way the tiny ones don't actually take any damage. I also spaced out the power snow because it's a little bit more effective and it saves on resources. There's no iron golem so you don't have to worry about pulling them to a single location but it does take a little bit more rails to collect the entire area. If you'd like to know how to properly set up a magma cube mob spawner farm check out this tutorial that I did linked below. So now let's take a look at my magma cube farm that uses the basalt biome. Now I built mine above the nether slant because this makes it really easy to build up but you can't do this on the bedrock edition. The way this one works is we have this spawning platform that is technically a basalt biome up here. So magma cubes will spawn on it and we have an iron golem in the center where they're trying to pathfind to trying to attack him but instead they'll get close and end up dying on these wither roses. We have some anti-gas spawning protection with these rows here. And the entire thing is a circle because the player AFK is way up in the air. That way the only thing can spawn in the world is magma cubes onto this platform and nothing will spawn in below. This is what makes this farm really easy to build up as well as quite efficient. So now I got it updated so that it works for getting the new frog lights. So I came in here, removed the wither roses so they didn't die. I put in the powder snow one block higher. This way it kills the large ones as well as the small ones but not the tiny ones. We also have two layers of walls here so that the golem can actually kill these guys and the little guys aren't standing on top of the walls and dying from the powder snow. So now all we have to do is let some frogs loose in this area and they should eat all these guys up and drop the new frog lights and then those are going to get picked up by the hopper system that is underneath and the rail system which is going to transport all the loot over into these chests. Now this farm typically produces around 2,000 magma cream per hour, but magma cream only came from the large as well as the small ones and not the tiny ones. Where in this farm we really need just tiny ones and not the other ones. So with an adequate amount of frogs, this farm should produce over 2,000 frog lights per hour. Now this farm here produces around 250 magma cream per hour, so it's probably possible for this farm to produce over that amount in frog lights. Now in order to get all three lights, it means you need all three colors of the frogs. That means you need to raise up tadpoles in all three different biomes and then transport them to wherever you have the farm. Now you can use like boats or minecarts to move them, but it's also just as easy to move these guys around with a lead. You can even fly around with elytra and carry these guys. Now this mechanic of the frogs eating the magma cubes and dropping off a block is pretty unique. If you think about it, there's not too many mobs in the game that will immediately give you a block without you having to craft it. Some exceptions are like bartering, hero of the village, or shearing sheep. And this method might be the easiest out of all of them in order to just get tons of blocks. Now I'd like to show you guys 14 funny and weird things you can do with the new frogs that we came across during my streams. You can check those out every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Now after the frogs lay their eggs on the surface, it's actually possible to just place some blocks underneath of these and once so, these eggs will no longer hatch. Frogs are able to jump up to 2 meters tall, so anything higher they won't be able to get out of. When frog eggs hatch, they can produce anywhere from 0 to 12 tadpoles. And tadpoles themselves can get pushed by moving water. You can move the eggs with pistons, and they don't actually need to have a supporting block. The eggs are very thin, but you can't stand on top of them. Naming a frog dinner bone makes it look like it's standing on the bottom side of the water. And it looks so funny when they're swimming upside down. Axolotls will go after the tadpoles and kill them but they will not attack the frogs. Renaming a tadpole in a bucket, then placing it down will not actually give it a name. The frog eggs cannot be read with a compared, but when they hatch, that can be detected by an observer. They used to be able to place repeaters on top of eggs, but that's recently been changed. Name tagging a tadpole will keep its name when it grows up, but the gem name doesn't do anything for the frogs. Something unique to Bedrock Edition is that some blocks can actually be placed inside of flowing water. This includes the new eggs, so if I place water over here, Water flows over there, but the actual egg is still in place. Other things in bedrock can also do this, like levers. 
Now check out this playlist to see how we're designing a farm for every item in the game of Minecraft, or this playlist which contains tons of simple farms for your survival world. Thank you guys so much for all the amazing support in 2021, and with your guys' help, we can make 2022 even better yet. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to you all. I'd like to thank all you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye